Hi, welcome back. A few weeks ago, when the Facebook data scandals broke out, it wasn't just Facebook that got punished. It was the other three stocks that formed part of the fan group that also saw punishment. You saw Amazon, Netflix, and Google each lose about 12% of their value. And given their large market caps, that was hundreds of billions of dollars in value. And the bottom line is, as a result of the Facebook scandal, change is coming, not just to Facebook, but perhaps to all of these companies, because they all use data from users or subscribers in one way or the other to make themselves the dominant companies that they are. The question, though, is, is the write down that you're seeing in those companies justified given the change that's coming? And that's part of the reason I've chosen to spend the last few sessions looking at these companies. So let's take a step back and think about valuation. If you look at a typical valuation, there are dozens of inputs that drive the value of a company, right? Risk-free rates, risk premiums, cash flows, growth rates, capex, and and it's easy to to drown in these inputs. But the reality is, if you look at the value of any company, there is one number more than any other that drives the value of the company. I call this the value driver. You say, how do I find out what that company is and why should I care? The reason you should care about what that one number is, the key value driver for your company, is it gives you a focus. Focus on what? First, when you go looking for information, if you know the number that most drives the value of a company, that's what you will focus your attention on. Second, if you're ever given a chance to question management, you want to make your questions about that key number. And finally, when you're tracking information disclosures by the company, you're tracking to see how it does in that number. Let me go back. When I did my Facebook valuation, the number that I said that's going to drive its value, it's its operating margin. It's a number that I feel most uncertain about. How will that play out? As I look at Facebook's earnings reports in the coming quarters, that's a number I'm going to focus on. What's the margin? What is it doing? How is it changing? Because to me, that's what's going to determine whether my investment in Facebook is going to pay off. Now, you might wonder how you come up with that value driver. How do you find that one number? Well, you first you'd want to find a number that actually makes a difference. Let's face it, of the dozen inputs that might drive evaluation, eight might not make that much of a difference. So for instance, what do you assume about working capital might seem like a big assumption to you, but when you change it, if it doesn't change value, you really don't care. So the first thing you're going to look for is a variable that changes your value as you change that variable. The second is the uncertainty you feel about that variable. So as an example, you might decide that operating margins are a big driver of value, but if you feel pretty certain about the operating margin, it's not your value driver. So you're looking for both factors. You want a variable that affects your value and also a variable that you feel uncertain about. And the implications then are simple. That variable is not going to be the same for every company. In fact, if you look at my Netflix and Facebook valuations, you already saw that with Facebook, my focus was on operating margin. With Netflix, it's going to be in the growth and content cost. So for different companies, that variable is going to be different, and you have to make that judgment with each company. Second, even for the same company, two people looking at the same company might not fixate or or choose the same variable as the driver variable, because we might have very different perspectives and tell very different stories about the company. Let's start by taking a look at Alphabet or Google's market history and using Alphabet as our example of talking about the one key variable that matters. Looking at the last 14 years since Google's IPO, there's no, there's really no debate. This has been one of the great investments that somebody could have made. And I'll make a confession. I've never held Google over this time period. And there is a cost that I've paid for not holding it. Even though the company lost $94.5 billion in market cap between March 15th and April 3rd, the overall story is one of incredible success. If you wonder what that might be that caused the success, the answer is very simple. The companies have been able to deliver on every single dimension. This graph you see the revenues and operating income for Google going back to 2004. You can see the building up of revenues over time. And what's fascinating is how stable revenue growth rates and operating margins have been for the last eight or nine years. And that is particularly impressive because maintaining revenue growth rates as the company is scaled up must have been a more and more difficult task, but, but Google has been able to pull it off. So let's look at the state of play for Google and where it is as a company right now. I see Google as being part of a duopoly in advertising right now with Facebook being the other player. And I'll come and back this up. It's changing advertising as a business and claiming a larger and larger slice. That's the first 
characteristic that I want to bring out about where Google is right now. The second, Google is everywhere. It's not just a search engine. It's YouTube, it's Gmail, it's shared documents on Google. It's even Google Home. So it's not just Google search anymore. And third, this company, in spite of all of its other attempts to expand its business model, is still remarkably dependent on advertising for its revenues. So let's start with this duopoly in advertising. Let's start off with a very basic fact. Digital advertising is becoming a larger and larger slice of overall advertising. In 2017, out of the $584 billion collectively spent on global advertising, $228 billion came from digital advertising. It's grown from about 10 to 15% of overall advertising, as short a period as seven years ago, to almost 40%. Google and Facebook dominate the digital advertising business. Dominate in what sense? The market share for Google is over 42% and Facebook's market share is almost 21%. And here's the scariest bit about this domination. The domination is getting even greater. In 2017, Google and Facebook accounted for 84% of the growth rate or the growth in the digital advertising business. So not only are these companies big, they're getting bigger. The Google Suite, as I said, is much more expensive than just the search engine. It's being, it's being added to, and in a sense, it's Google's attempt to expand its ecosystem. Gmail, YouTube, Android are all parts of Google. The reach for Google is therefore into your home, if you think about Google Home and Google Shared Documents. And if you think Facebook knows a lot about you, worry about data privacy, you should find out what Google knows about you. In fact, in a, in a New York Times article, a reporter actually went and explored how much Facebook knew about him by looking at the data. You can download the data Facebook has on you. And then he compared it to what Google knew about him, and he found that Google knew a lot more about him than Facebook did. And finally, if you think about, uh, about Alphabet, change that Google made with a lot of fanfare a couple of years ago because it said we're not just an advertising company. It turns out that, that bet hasn't quite shown up yet. In fact, Google is mostly advertising still as a company. It's about 98.91% coming from Google and the, alf the bets, the other bets that Google has made, the rest of Alphabet, so to speak, is still a very small slice of the company. I'm not suggesting that they don't have promise because including here, included in these other bets is way more. The, elect, the driverless car, you've got uh, Verily, which is their healthcare business. You've got their, you, you, you've got pieces that might not have come into play yet. Maybe these are option payoff, but the pay, but you're not seeing the payoff yet. So let's look at the bottom line. Google has changed the advertising business and dominates it with Facebook being its only real competition. What's allowed Google to keep scaling up growth is the fact that it's been able to expand the, the, the size of the digital advertising business and increase its slice of that business. The wild card here is whether the privacy laws that might come into play because of the Facebook data scandal are going to impede Google in its attempt in using user data to keep expanding in this business. And finally, as digital advertising starts to level off, Google is, is going to start to run into some problems maintaining its double-digit growth. So in value in Google, here's what my story is going to be. I'm going to assume that growth will level off. It will decrease from what you've seen in the most recent past. In the last five years, the compounded annual growth rate in Google revenues has been about 15% a year. I think that growth rate will drop to about 12%. Still a pretty healthy growth rate, but I think it's going to drop to 12%. I assume that Google is going to be able to maintain its margins. This is a company that's been able to sustain 27 to 28% margins for much of the last decade. I don't see why that's going to change. My lower growth rate comes partly from the fact that digital advertising's growth is going to slow and that with data privacy restrictions, perhaps one of Google's many advantages will be reduced, if not eliminated. So let's see how this plays out in my valuation of Google. So here's what I did. I brought down the revenue growth rate. I left the margins as they were, and I valued the company based on those assumptions. There are assumptions at about $968 per share. That's actually surprisingly close to $1,030. You're saying, why surprisingly close? Because I've never come this close 
to, find, to, to, to buy in Google, where the value has been this close to price. Is there uncertain valuation? Absolutely. And just as I did with Facebook, here's what I did. I took my big assumptions about revenue growth, about margins, about cost of capital, and I let those assumptions become distributions, which feeds into a distribution of value. And the median value doesn't tell me that much. It's about $957. It still remains overvalued, but there's now a 35% chance it's undervalued, a 65% chance it's overvalued. The upside is not as skewed as it was with Facebook, so there's less of a potential upside. But overall, the distribution suggests that at the existing price for 1030 I wouldn't buy the stock. That doesn't mean I wouldn't buy the stock ever because, you're, in my view, you're one shock away from this company being within striking range. And that is the, the takeaway that I have for Google is I've got tantalizingly close to buying the stock. And if the stock drops another 5 or 10%, it could be well within my buying range. That might never happen and I might never get a chance to buy Google. But it's good to know that I got this close. Let me close with the discussion of a value driver. Earlier in this session, I talked about the one number, the one number that drives the value of a company. The question is, with Google, what is that number? I looked at the two numbers that drive the value the most. One is revenue growth, the other is operating margin. Both have an impact on value. Changing either number has a big impact on value. So they could both be value drivers. The question is, which one do I feel most uncertain about? I'll be quite honest, I don't feel as uncertain about margin with Google as I do with revenue growth. I think with Google, my surprises, my negative surprise they come will be on revenue growth. So if you look at revenue growth numbers, the changing of the revenue growth from 4% to 20%, this is the compounded annual revenue growth over the first five years, has a significant effect on value and I feel uncertain. So I'm going to make that my, ch my choice of a value driver for Google. Your choice might be different, but it is a subjective judgment as I said. So here's my final, fi the final decision. Based on where Google is buy, uh, trading right now, I would not buy Google, but I think its biggest challenge going forward is going to be maintaining revenue growth. Why is it more of a challenge for Google than it is for Facebook? Because Google is a much bigger company in terms of revenues than Facebook, and given that they're in the same business, the online advertising business, Google's going to hit the ceiling a little sooner than Facebook is, and that's why I think revenue growth matters. The downside for Google is the data privacy restriction require laws or regulations that come about as a result of Facebook start biting, then revenue growth could start to drop off because one of the biggest advantages they bring to the game is what they know about their users and tailoring advertising to it. The upside for Google is as their, not only is their portfolio of products much wider than it was, you know, with YouTube, there is this potential upside, not just from YouTube, which I think has a lot of untapped potential. It has, if you think about it, it's just, in terms of time spent, people spend, you know, right after Facebook, right below it, comes YouTube in terms of the amount of time that people are with it. And it's it's entirely possible that YouTube could be adapted to offer the kind of competition to Spotify and Netflix that it hasn't hitherto. And there's also the potential that one of Alphabet's, one of its bets, whether it be Waymo or whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's Verily, might actually end up paying off big time. So there is that potential upside. And that's why I said if the stock price drops even a little below my value, I'd be a buyer because I think that potential upside will tilt the balance in favor of buying. I hope you enjoyed the session and thank you very much for listening.